So in this problem, you are needing to find the, uh, the surface area of a paraboloid of a function r, which r is a vector, and that depends on u and v. And this is the function, the, the template you use to find the surface area. It's a double integral of the length of the cross product of the derivatives of, uh, of r with respect to u and with respect to v. So r is given to you as, uh, as the r vector of u and v. It's 2u cosine v, 2u sine v, and u squared. So first thing we'll do is find the derivatives of these with u and v. The derivative with respect to u is fairly easy. 2u becomes 2, u squared becomes 2u. The cosine and sine function, which depend on v, are left unchanged. You have to use the trigonometric rules for the dr dv, though. The derivative of cosine being negative sine, and the derivative of sine being positive cosine. And so you get negative 2u sine v, 2u cosine v. And since we're taking the derivative of u squared with respect to v, which is not present in that equation, it's going to be 0. And so we've got our two, our two derivatives. Now let's take the, we're going to take the cross product of these. If you don't quite recall what the cross product is, it's basically a determinant of the, of these, uh, the, of the product of these two vectors. And so you have uh, a cross b is equal to the determinant of all that. So you're, it's going to, be uh, <clears throat> ay times bz minus azby minus the, the, the quantity of axbz minus azbx plus the axby minus aybx. You, you perform these multiplications on these two drdu and drdv, and uh, you will get this. You will get 2 sine v times 0, negative 2u times 2, times u times cosine v for your first component. You get uh, 2u times negative 2 times u sine v minus 2 cosine v times 0. And then on the bottom is the most sophisticated one. 2 cosine v times 2u times cosine v minus 2 sine v times negative 2 times u times sine v. The bottom one is also the one that has a, a lot cancel out because you got a cosine square on the left and you have a sine square on the right. And you can uh, actually reduce those down to uh, 1. So it would be basically the 4 times u times cosine squared plus 4 times u sine squared. So it will be 4u times cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. So it would just be 4u on the bottom. On the top, you got two terms uh, that are multiplied by 0. So you're going to get negative 4u cosine v for the first component, negative 4u sine v for your second component. That's what we have here. That's what those will reduce to. And so we've got our cross product vector now. But we're not done yet. We still have to uh, find uh, the length of that vector and then take the double integral of that length formula. So we have to find the length of this. You remember how you find the length of a vector. You, you square the terms, sum them up, and then take the square root. The, just like this. And so here it is. I'll back out a little bit so you can see this. And so there's our three components. Squared becomes uh, our, our negative fours become 16s. Our u squares become u to the fourth. And our 4u to the squared uh, becomes 16u squared. And now we have our sines and cosines again that we can combine up to being 1. So we have 16 times u to the fourth, which is times 1, 
plus 16u squared, which is left uh, from above. We can actually factor out the u squared out of this. You can actually factor out a 16 as well. And that gives you on the outside 4u times the uh, square root of u squared plus 1. <clears throat> so that's our, our length of our vector. But to find the surface area, we need to take the uh, double integral of this. S is equal to the double integral of 4u times the square root of u squared plus 1, dA, which A is our area. This is, cannot really be written as a double integral of our boundaries. The u was allowed to be between 0 and 2, and v was allowed to be between 0 and 2 pi, according to the definitions of the problem. And so we'll do the, we'll put the v on the inside. We'll put the v on the inside because there's no v's here. And that's, that makes it a fairly simple integral because the integral of a constant is constant times v. So I'm going to constant times k or constant times j or whatever. And so I evaluated from 2 pi down to 0. It basically just becomes 2 pi times the function you started with. So yeah, you definitely want to start with v on this one. It's a lot easier this way. The other way, in other direction, it would work too. Just a lot more work. And so we got it 0 to 2 for 2 pi times 4u square root of u squared plus 1. Let's simplify this. Let's get that 2 pi and that 4 outside. So we have 8 pi outside there. We simplify this. I forgot to write the du there. But that's supposed to be a du after that integral. The, the du and the integral sign are part of the same notation. You can't have one without the other, but I, I screwed up here. So it's integral 0 to 2, the definite integral from 0 to 2 of u times square root of u, plus, of u squared plus 1, du. And this uh, is actually a substitution because look at this. We have u squared plus 1, and then we have u. The derivative of u squared plus 1 is a multiple of u. So we can actually do a, do a substitution to simplify this integral. And what I did is I made uh, u, plus, u squared plus 1 equal to k. And now, what's the derivative of k with respect to u? dk du is equal to uh, 2 times u. So dk is equal to 2u du, which if you were to actually think of du and dk being, in a way, variables, solve for du, you get dk over 2u. And now just substitute these things in. we got a du in our equation on top. We'll replace that with a dk over 2u. We'll replace the u squared plus 1 with a k. And we get this. We get a u times square root of k times dk over 2u. This u and this u cancel out. So we end up with 1 half square root of k. I have noticed something here. We got our boundary of our integral is from 1 to 5 now. It was uh, 0 to 2. That's because, for, because before it was with respect to variable u, but we made a change. We turned it into being respect to with variable k. D, you see that dk there. So just like how we made a substitution of k equals u squared plus 1, we have to do that to our boundaries, which are, which are dependent on on u being the variable. So we do 0 squared plus 1 is equal to 1. The 2 squared plus 1 is equal to 5. So our boundaries have to be adjusted with a variable change. And so we have we have this here, and the u's cancel out. We've got, uh, now we've got a 1 half constant, which can come outside to be 4 pi times um, the integral of, from 1 to 5 of square root of k dk. This is a power rule integral. It's k to the 1 half power. We raise it to uh, by, one degree, by 1 degree. We end up with k to the 3 halves times 2 thirds. 
evaluated from as k is from 5 down to 1. And so that we can take that 2 thirds out and just make that an 8 pi over 3. And we have k to the 5 in 5 to the 3 halves minus 1 to the 3 halves, which is equal to 1. And really, this is about as simplified as you can take it, because, uh, because that's square root of 125, of which there is no uh, exact value for. You can, it's, a, uh, it's most uh, elegantly written in this form. So where this is exact with a finite number of digits. So that's, that's the area. You can place this into a calculator and achieve at a, uh, a decimal point number for which this is equal to. I didn't do this because that's something anybody can do. So uh, have fun with this. Uh, that's how it's done.